All right, welcome to this video. We're gonna be solving lead code problem 199, binary tree, right side view. So they give you a binary tree. I like what the directions say. They say, imagine you're a person standing to the right of this tree and you're looking sideways, left, what nodes would you see? You would see just the one, the three, and the four node, right? Because these nodes would block the view of this two and five node. So you, you should turn the output of one, three, four. Now this problem seems deceptively easy. My initial approach was, oh, just keep traversing passing uh, each node's right child, and then appending the current value of the node as you traverse down the right child of each node into a result array, and that'll give you the result. But what the directions don't show is what happens if this three node does not have a right child and the four is on the left-hand side of three. So four is the left child node of three. Then it should still show one, three, four, because if you're on the right-hand side, you'll still see that four node if it's the left child of three. So if you only pass down the right children, um, that approach won't work, right? If this four node is on the left-hand side of three. So one easy way that I can think of to solve this is to use a breadth-first search, right? Breadth-first search goes by each level, and then for each level, you pass the last node of each level to your result, right? So breadth-first search goes up here, pass in one, breadth-first search gets two and three, the last node of here is three, then breadth-first BFS goes down to this last level. Last node here is a four, and that would work. So you can do that. There's nothing wrong with it. But in JavaScript, well, with breadth first search, you need a queue. And JavaScript does not come in with built-in queues. You have to create from scratch. And if you're too la lazy to make a queue from scratch, you can simulate queue first in, first out behavior using an array, but then your time complexity will get messed up. So I wanna do a slightly different approach. And I think it's easier if I type out my approach rather than explain it. So let's get started. So in my code editor, I'll say, let res be equal to an empty array, right? This will be the result. It's initially empty, we're gonna fill it out. And I'm gonna solve this, whoops. Let's uh, reset that. I'm gonna solve this with helper method recursion. So I'll create my helper recursive function and I'll call it traverse and it takes in a node and a depth level. Like kind of like, so this would, in my code, this would be depth level zero, depth level one, and depth level two, right? Similar to how arrays, they start at zero, so will our depth. Then I'll say if no node return, right? So you don't recursively recall. So this is our base case for our recursive function. Otherwise, I would check, hey, if no res at index of depth, then res at index of depth is equal to node.val, right? Because each node has a val. So we only put in one value from each level. And this code says, if a value for that level has not been put in here yet, set it to that value of our current node. Otherwise, I'll say traverse, or not otherwise, but after this, we'll say traverse node.write, and then pass in depth plus one, because we're going down another level, so depth plus one. And then we will also do traverse node.left. It's really important that in this uh, function right here, we traverse the right child first, right? Because we only put one node value for each level, and in our res array, each index, each position in the index in the array, excuse me, each index position in the array represents one value from each level. And we want we want to prioritize the right child first, right? So once this is done, I'll say traverse root zero. We're gonna start our depth at level zero to match our array indices, start at zero, right? We define the function, now let's call it. And then once traverse is called, res will have the appropriate results. So then I'll say return res. And of course, if you like this kind of content, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos. Let's make sure our code passes the lead code test. So I'll submit and we're good to go. So 
What is the binary tree right side view complexity analysis? Time complexity is O of n because we traverse every node in the tree, and space complexity is also O of n because we make use of recursion, and the call stack of all those recursive calls could be a size or length of the binary tree given. And again, you can do this with a BFS, but this is the approach I like to do. So that should be it for this video. Thank you.